this is Saki Moto, and today we are going to watch the match, uh, the semifinal match between the Pacific Slowbros and the Norwegian Darmanitans. I've got Goomer22 here with me as well. Hello, hello. So, this matchup, kind of crazy. We've got two previous VDL champions um, going head to head in the semifinals. They both wanna. They both want a second ring. Um, Slowbos, you know, they were champions last year. They want the. They want the repeat. Um, and the Norwegian Dermanitans want to repeat what they did earlier this season, which was uh, actually beat the Slowbros in the regular season. So um, it was a really good match uh, last time, and I think it's gonna be a really good match this time. So what uh, I think what Goomer and I are going to do right here before we hop into the match is we're going to actually uh, check out both teams um, and kind of do kind of just check them out and see uh, you know, talk about what we expect and what's really threatening on on either side here. Um, so Goomer, I mean, Slow Bros, Darmantes, they both have scary teams. Uh, what can you kind of pick apart just initially looking at them? Well, I think I think one thing that's interesting is uh, you you've got a draft league matchup where uh, Dragapult actually isn't the fastest uh, thing on on either team. So uh, uh, Otto's got this Excel Gore. Um, it'll be interesting uh, to see if he brings it out, but um, it does make it a little tricky uh, with the speed tiers, knowing that uh, he's actually got something faster than the Dragapult to you know potentially disrupt it in some ways. Um, the other thing that I noticed is that. Uh, Defiant Thunderous is uh, could actually be very interesting because um, I see that the Darmantans actually have double intimidate with Torcat and Luxray, and uh, you, you know, you've got this Max Drag uh, Dragapult if he wants to go for that, uh, and and Wormwinds and and you know Max Phantasms both lower a stat uh, which would activate Defiant. So uh, Defiant Thunderous could be uh, could be very interesting. Um, now the Narantans also have redirection, which uh, the Slowbros don't have, um, so uh, that that makes it a little tricky for the Slowbros as well. Yeah, and what I really like about both these teams and both these players and how they use these teams is there are so many threats on either side because of how they prep and how they utilize like their entire team. We've seen on the Norwegian Narantan side, Gigalith maxed. We've seen uh, Primarina obviously maxed. I mean. I'm pretty sure we've seen a Max Dragapult. Um, I've seen a Max Gallade. I mean, and he just has a bunch of other threats that you have to watch out for. I mean, Luxray can be threatening. Absol can be threatening. Darmanitan can be threatening. Um, I know he's used the Trevenant. And then on the Slowbro side, I mean, the Palisand, the Rapidash, the Arcanine, the Thunderous, the Verizian. I mean, there's just so many things you have to prepare for. You kind of, I mean, I'm assuming both teams, they're just going to have to, I mean, you know, prep for the best and just really have to adapt in this series. Yeah, it should be, it should be a really good game. Um, they've got a lot of combos that they can uh, bring out here and uh, may the best, uh, may, may the best player win. Yep. And the winner of this best of three will go on to the championship, the season four video championship, and they will play the winner of uh, Goomer 22 here and Cadella. So, um, gonna be gonna be really tight, and uh, I'm excited to see what what happens. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna hop into the game here, and um, yeah, let's see. Okay. So Goomer, both these players, you know, um, really really great great players. They have great teams, great coaches. They both been previous championships or been previous champions. Not surprised to both see them here. Um, would you agree? Oh, I would. I would absolutely agree. Uh, I think it's kind of interesting that Colopsia was uh, with the Norwegian Darmantans was actually uh, actually uh, under th under threat of being a wild card contender uh, over in your division. Uh, you had a really tough division over there, but he he actually squ uh, squeaked out a playoff spot in um, in the uh, the last week there um, to not be a wild card and. Uh, 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 so he proved himself there, and he's he's here in the semifinals. Um, so that's uh, that's, there's no surprise there. Yeah, and I see the it's kind of crazy because uh, you know Klopsi is over in my division. Um, scary player. I never know what to what to expect going up against him because um, I know he preps his mind, uh, you know, his mind off. But um, and kind of auto the same. 
in the Pacific Slope Rose, kind of same over in your division. Just really hard to prep for, and just a, a dominant player. Um, you know, top of your division. Um, I mean, I think he's one of those players that just everybody's scared to face. Okay, so we're viewing this from Otto's perspective. Um, interesting. I don't know that I've seen uh, the Darmantians use the Trevenant too often this season. Uh, <clears throat> should be interesting how he uses that. Uh, potentially a Shadow Sneak Weakness policy uh, or, or some, some Forest Curse um, shenanigans, but I, I don't see how uh, that would be too helpful here. I mean, I guess we could see. So, what that, what that forest curse is that add the grass typing, right? So, I mean, maybe is he looking for like Dragapult airstreams? It could scarf the Trevenant. I don't know. I mean, we never know. You never know what to expect here. It's right. Um, um, one thing it could it could actually uh, add a resist. You know, if he added a grass type to Gigalith, uh, it would then resist ground moves. Uh, if he added a, a grass type, it would also resist grass moves, like from the from the Brazilian. So, um, could do something there. Um, and from Otto's side, we see we see he does have the Excel War Palace and combo. Um, I think he has a little bit stronger Trick Room mode, so we'll see if he opts to go for that as well. Yeah, something interesting with the weakness policy Palace and you could see the. Uh... Excel Gore come out, but you could also see a Trick Room set up by the Slowbro, and maybe even a Surf. We'll have to see. Right. I think uh, I think Slowbro and Palisand definitely do better than Gigalith uh, under Trick Room. All Interesting. Right. Yeah, I gotta say I did not expect the Excel Gore and the Thunderous lead, but maybe this is a, uh, you know. The, He's throwing out the Accelagor because it outspeeds the Thunderous, and it's, he's going to use it as a support. We'll have to see. He also might have been expecting a Dragapult lead. Uh, it's also... Uh, it'll be interesting to find out whether this Thunderous is Prankster or Defiant. Um, th th this Thunderous does really threaten this Primarina. However, the Gigalith threatens the Thunderous and this Accelagor, so Otto's not really in the, in the best position here. And we know that... Calopsia loves that Gigalith. He loves to max it. Um, he's he's got he's had great prep with it uh, in previous games. So uh, we'll see if we see a, a turn one max here. We don't. So it does look like he goes for the substitute, um, hinting at it's most likely Prankster, uh, especially because it went before that Excel Gore. Flip turn from the Prima makes me think that that's a weakness policy Gigalith. Um, and, and you see the Gigalith not really threatened by either of these Pokemon too much on Otto's side, so not going to not gonna take a risky max there, especially with the Yawn coming out from the Excel Gore. So good choice by uh, Calypso not to max there. Um, but uh, Otto setting up the substitute with the Thunderous, um, really not what you want to see um, if you're on Calypso's side. That Thunderous can be really annoying if it stays on the, on the field for a while. Right, and uh, and with this with this Gigalith now yawned, uh, uh, he, he's able to switch it out since he since he didn't max and, and not have to waste his max. He does go for the rock slide. Let's see if it breaks the substitute. I have a feeling it might. Very safe rock slide there. You know, two Pokemon weak to rock. I'm not surprised to use that rock slide, and and probably a good use of the substitute to kind of you know uh, not take so much damage from that rock slide there. Trying to get right, connects, connects on both, and, and Calopsia takes the first KO here. So now the question is, how is he going to deal with this uh, Gigalith? Uh, now the Excel Gore is gone. He doesn't have uh, the ability to set up his Palisand uh, with, with that um, typical uh, gimmick. And uh, actually, he's put himself in an even better position now because he's swapped out, or uh, um, Calopsia has swapped out that, that Primarina for the Luxray, which threatens this Slowking uh, in his Trick Room mode. You know, this Gigalith is, is a really scary 
threat on Colopsia's side. And I'm, I'm thinking that this Palisand actually matches up really well into it. And I'm being that the, you know, if it gets hit with a water move and procs that weakness policy, it'll also boost, spike up its defense and um, square up against that Gigalith really well. Um, I think Otto might just be waiting to get it into the best position he can. Yeah, and I think I think the other thing uh, that's tough here is Gigalith can have a, a throat chop, a, a dark move, so it, it could have a way to hit this Slowbro and um, Palisand super effectively. Um, but th that sand is, is giving uh, Gigalith a special defense boost, and so uh, I just don't know if Otto has the pressure right now to take it out. Um, and if Trick Room goes up, I think we could very well see a potential... Gigalith and Palace and Max here. And I don't know about you, Goomer, but um, that seems like a lot of damage for a Volt Switch against a Slow King. I mean, we're familiar with Luxray. It, do you think that could be... I mean, do you think it could be Specs, or is that just a, a well-trained Luxray and Special Attack? Well, Slow King does have pretty good Special Defense. Um, I would say that looked like Specs damage. Uh, it, it's, you know... 95 base power from Luxray. Um, unless this Slowbro was, or Slowking is a lot more offensively trained, um, which I wouldn't suspect, uh, given that it's it's meant to, uh, you know, potentially proc this weakness policy on the Palace Hand. Um, I'd, I'd go ahead and guess that, that that's Specs. So we're getting a lot of item information this first game. Um, we'll see how we'll see how players take that into account for game two. Now, the awkward part here is that the Gigalith is slower than the Palisand. And, you know, ideally you want to set up Trick Room with this um, Slow King and then go for the Surf, proc the Palisand, and go to town. But Surf could potentially proc the, the Gigalith's weakness policy as well. And then, um, you know, and that could be dangerous if you don't dish out enough damage to the Gigalith um, soon enough. So I think Otto is really just trying to get himself in a good position here, and then he's going to rely on his Dynamax. We see a Dynamax from Colopsia's side. I'm assuming... This is his Gigalith, but we'll see. It could be the Dragapult. I think uh, I think he might be trying to catch a Max Quake into that um, into that Slowbro um, to to give this Gigalith even more special defense and uh, and try to try to waste a Max move there. We'll see if he made the right call. Um, I think the other issue is that um, since Gigalith underspeeds even Slowking, um, it could it could take it out before. He's, Otto's even able to proc the weakness policy for this palace hand. So um, we'll see how this switch pays off. And and yet we still haven't even talked about what the Dragon Bolt's doing. It, it could be going for a big phantom force into this uh, oh, you were palace right. hand. He did go for that max quake. That was a massive read. Wow. That's a huge play from Otto. And a quake doing just about 50, a little over 50% to this Gigalith. That's interesting. Even with the sand special defense boost, uh, a weakness policy boost in Pal Sand would uh, just one shot this Gigalith. Man, I love seeing the Sand Castle do well, but I mean, he did dish out a lot of damage there. But the Gigalith just got a weakness policy boost, and the Dragapult set up Light Screen. So, really, I mean, really, this positioning looks a lot better for Clopsy, in my opinion. I agree. Uh, this Palace Sand. Um, could could opt to go for uh, the Gigalith. Um, now, the Thunderous will underspeed the Dragapult and Trick Room. So the question is, does the Gigalith uh, opt to take out this Thunderous with its weakness policy, or does it uh, try to dish out big damage into the Palace Hand? Um, you know, I, I wonder if uh, Otto opts to go for a potential... Uh, you know, offensive move and, and, and double up on the Gigalith and potentially take it out, even through this light screen. Um, that could be a play. We see no protects here. Max Quake can boost that special defense even more, so I really doubt this Gigalith has a chance of going down unless it gets crit. And we still don't know whether this Gigalith does have, uh, you know, throat chop um, to hit the Palace Hand for super effective. But yeah, after the light screen and the special defense boost, it's it's now going to take two more quakes um, for Palace Hand to take it out. Oh 
man, that is just such little damage. Possibly trying to catch a flinch with the uh, with the Dark Pulse, though. Uh, however, he doesn't get it. We see the Breaking Swipe from this Dragapult. So with Breaking Swipe and Light Screen, I'm guessing this Dragapult is not uh, necessarily a max option for Klopsia. Uh, looks like he's using it more supportively. Um, I know I've seen Klopsia use this Dragapult before. I'm a big fan. It's similar to the one that was on, uh, I think... Uh, Wolfie's um, you know, championship, Players' Cup championship team with the Colossal and it, it, with the Breaking Swipe and the Light Screen it's just such a good support. It, I, I'm a big fan of that set and I know Klobsy likes using it. Now we've only got a few more turns of Trick Room. Um, if this Palace Hand is able to knock the Gigalith out with a, with a crit uh, or a double up from the Thunderous um, I think Otto would be in decent position to um, to gain a little bit of momentum back. Um, however, he uh, he only has a, f a few more of these turns of, of Trick Room to utilize. And that Gigalith is dishing out big, big damage. And his special defense is just through the moon. And unfortunately, on, uh, on Otto's side, he has three special attackers going against... This just... Quaked up Gigalith with light screen. I mean, and, and the other thing we haven't talked about is the fact that the Dragapult's gaining special defense boosts as well, and is 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 making it all the, all the much harder to take down from the Thunderous. Ah man, a crit would be really clutch for Auto right now. They're just slowly chipping away at each other. That's some big damage. Though. That's <laughs> and and yet, Colopsia gets the crit. So this one does not look good for Auto. Um, yeah, he's, uh, you know, Sandstorm's gone, and uh, I believe Trick Room, there still might be one more turn, but uh, he's he's got, you know, uh, Thunderous with about 10% health and a Slow King, um, which we find out is Regenerator. It's got some, it's got some of that health back now. Uh, however, it's, uh, I don't think he's got enough momentum now. To, uh, to take this, especially considering that um, although Darmantan's Mons are, are very, very low out right now, he's, he's got two fully health uh, Mons in the back, and one's a pre-marina. Um, I don't see a way uh, for Otto out this game. How, how do you think he adjusts for game two, though? I mean, he did acquire some pretty good information here. I mean, he's got the Gigalith with the weakness policy. Um, you know, the Max Quakes are scary. The Dragapult, such a strong flex between support and just like a Dynamax option. Really good information to know that it's probably a support. I mean, it, it could be both, but it's pro he's, you know, Klopsy is probably looking to make this Dragapult just to support. So that is some good information um, to acquire. And he also figured out that, you know, the Prima has flip turn, um, you know, could potentially... I can't, I can't remember. Was it was it potentially scarfed? Uh, we don't know because uh, Otto had Prankster and Excelgor, which is extremely fast. So, uh, but but seeing the flip turn, it did make me uh, make me think it, that, it, that it might be scarfed. And this Luxray did dished out a ton of damage with that Volt Switch, so it makes me think. I mean, it's definitely a special attacker. So you're not expecting anything. You know, you're probably not going to expect a superpower or the other physical moves that this Luxury will get. I mean, it, it's valuable information. I am really curious to see how um, Auto adjusts, and I'm, and I'm curious to see um, what Calypso brings next game because, um, you know, if I know both these players, I know they're fantastic at prep and, and making game plans. Auto's not just going to let Calypso do the exact same thing for game two. So, um, you know, Calypso is going to have to make some changes as well. <laughs> Right. Um, I mean, Klopsia could go with a, a similar game plan and, and see how uh, Auto adjusts. Because the interesting thing is um, he, he actually um, he flipped turned out and played, just played a little bit slower in the beginning. Um, and now, now that we know that Gigalith is weakness policy, you know, he could uh, even lead, lead the same thing and just adjust and go for the flip turn immediately on the Gigalith and proc that weakness policy. Um, so, yeah, it doesn't look like auto uh, necessarily has a way to hinder this Gigalith's damage output. Um, you know, it doesn't have any mons with Will-O-Wisp or, or Charm. Um, so 
the game looks the Gigalith still looks very strong from Colopsia's side. Um, we didn't see that Togepi get brought out, but uh, you know that could be a, another option uh, is is bringing some redirection and just um, flip turning to that Togepi, having the Gigalith start uh, dishing out big damage, taking KOs, and the Togepi redirecting uh, anything from that Gigalith. So. We do see Otto going with the same four, so he's confident he can win with those same four Pokemon. He just just wants to play a little differently this game. I, I'm interested. The, I thought the Verizian actually looked pretty good here, um, but he didn't have to bring it. We'll, we'll see. But then again, I don't know what he's prepped for. So, okay, same lead from Colopsia, same lead from Otto. Interesting. Both of them are trusting their game plans. Interesting. So we see the uh, the weather ball um, and the rain dance tech um, from Auto. I really like this. Um, uh, now I wonder if Cloxia plays a little bit more defensively, considering that the, you know. They both have the same lead, so he knows that Otto has an adjustment coming. Wow, no protects, though. No protects. Now, what's scary here is you are boosting up the Primarina's damage potential if it does go for Hyper Voice. He goes for the flip turn again. And it, it still boosts the damage for the flip turn, too, into that Thunderous. Um, now, if it had flip turned into the Gigalith and, and tried to proc that weakness policy, that would have been uh, a lot more damage into the Gigalith. Now, this is going to be a lot of damage to this Gigalith because he doesn't have that special defense boost from the Sandstorm, so I'm curious to see how much this does. What's interesting, too, is is with the Sandstorm uh, it one gone... Shots. Oh, my goodness, it one-shots. With the Sandstorm gone, the Exelgor's uh, Focus Sash stays intact, which is really nice for Otto. So Otto's looking in very good position. Now, Calopsia did make an adjustment. We saw that Otto went with the same four, but... Uh, this Trevenant wasn't here last game, so uh, I wonder what it's here to do. Really, really good turn one from Otto. It it, it could have been. That's the thing with that with both of those leads. Neither of them have perfectly safe plays that can really go for. They're always taking. They're both taking slight risks, and that one paid off for Otto big time. Considering a switch to the slow king here. And still no maxes from either side. Acid spray, not a move you see very often, but Really nice on Excel Gore. Uh, it, it's usually going to be the fastest mon out there, and just able to uh, drop the opponent's uh, special defense by by two. Um, it's just, you know it's essentially a fake tears with a little extra damage on top. Yeah, I really like Acid Spray. Uh, I mean, and especially on like, Excel Gore being so fast. Um, I myself have tried to create some VGC teams with utilizing that, and uh, haven't come up with anything. I, I, anything great yet but we'll see we'll see maybe i'll learn something from auto from auto i think the issue i think the issue here is that um uh since auto did switch out um he didn't actually get to take advantage of that minus two uh, special defense on the pre marina and it, he's giving uh Klopsi the opportunity now to switch out that pre marina um and, and remove those special defense drops However, he's putting he's putting him in kind of a tempting position throwing this Palisand out here because Palisand doesn't have the best um, uh, special defense, and this pre Marina um, in the rain would be really really strong. Um, uh, this tre this Trevenant's also threatening it, um, you know, being Grass and Ghost both super effective against Palisand uh, and Sloking actually. So um, we could potentially see a Trevenant max. Yeah, this is one of those. I mean. A Quake boost would be really nice against the Prima, but then again, um, you know, 
Uh, Max Phantasma would be great against the uh, the Trevin. Yeah, see, he goes just goes for the protect. Tries to play a little safe. The protect trick room. Uh, let's see if it pays off here. He's trying to give Palisand that speed advantage. Palopsia still playing it safe with uh, um, no uh, no Max. Does go with the Poltergeist into the Palisand. Does not double the Slow King. Let's him set up the Trick Room. Now let's see if Otto can do what he wants with this Palisand. I don't believe uh, I don't believe um, Palopsia has any flying types. So the the Max Quake into the Pre Marina is fairly safe, especially considering that Pre Marina is at minus two Special Defense. Um. And also, I mean, if you're if you're giving the Palisand a weakness policy with the Surf, you're boosting up his defense, and it's really not that afraid of this Trevenant. And he does max the Trevenant, the scary tree. Oh, I love this. That's what I was talking about. Both of these players are not afraid to max anybody. Like, they have so many Pokemon on their team that they will max. And they make it What's nice interesting here, though, is the Trevenant maxed first, meaning this could be Iron Ball Trevenant. That's a good point. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even pick up that on that. And now he's committed to his max in Trick Room with this Trevenant, um, potentially slower, a max Phantasm lowering its special defense, uh, or lowering its defense, and then uh, being able to use a max Phantasm again the next turn. That's a lot and that does of damage. More than that. He's gonna get that weakness policy. That's got to be Iron yeah, Ball Trevenant then. Drop the other issue. Is this uh, this this slow king is gonna uh, hit it for some surf in the rain as well? <gasps> Does it crit? No, he crit himself. No, oh. he crit himself. Oh, that's, that's that's absolutely brutal. That that palisade was about to probably wipe out whoever he attacked, and now he doesn't get any use out of his max. This is really looking bad for. Auto. Yeah, with Trick Room up and this uh, Iron Ball Trevenant being the fastest thing on the field, um, just able to wipe whatever it wants. And uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't see a way out here. Um, he thought about he thought about it. I mean, this looks, looks, like this looks really, looks like he's really bad this for one him. Out. Yeah, it, it just looks... Now, if he, even if he knocked out the Pre-Marina with a Max Quake, um, uh, it does get a little tricky um, because then uh, you do have a little bit of a mind game uh, with uh, whether the um, replacement for the Pre-Marina is able to take out the Slowking because um, the Trevenant could either finish off the Palace Hand or finish off the Slow King. But the Slow King could also reverse the Trick Room on that next turn uh, if it's able to survive. So you would have a little bit of mind games had he not crit himself with that Surf. And, um, he, he, you know, he, there there could have been a play there, especially if it was, uh, um, you know, depending on who, who Calypsia had in the back. So. Wow. So what a turn of events. The... Uh... That Iron Ball Trevenant, what's so interesting about that is that, I mean, he he got to launch his move off first, so, I mean, even if the Slowbro was able to surf the Palisand and get the weakness policy, he's still getting a Max Phantasm off before that Palisand can go for the, its own Max Phantasm. So, I mean, and the, and the Pre-Marina could have, you know, gone for a Hyper Voice. That Palisand really wasn't staying around long because of that crazy Iron Ball Trevenant prep. I mean, that, that was... Well done by Colopsia. I mean, really unfortunate that Otto crit himself. <laughs> we talked about that crit earlier, and he finally got his crit. It was on himself. So not the best of luck in in this scenario. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, I mean, that happens. I, I think I think, uh, I think think Colopsia put himself in a really good position there, though. And, uh, you know, props to him for, for taking those games. Really good prep. You know, he... He had a, a solid lead that he that he liked, um, and he stuck with it and just made it a little a little tweak in game two, which uh, proved to be 
extremely valuable um, for that surprise factor uh, with with the Iron Ball uh, Trevenant Max. And um, you know, props to him. A great set. They're both uh, great players, and so. Um, uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to see who ends up facing uh, Colopsia in the finals here. Yep, that, and that's going to be either Goomer twenty two, the man himself, or uh, or Kudella and the Texas Toad Frogs, who um, who I lost to in the playoffs. Um, he he's got a scary he's got a scarier team than I gave him credit for, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a great finals. Um, and you know, congrats to Colopsia again in the uh, Norwegian Jarmanitans for making it to the finals. Awesome prep, prepped out of this world. Otto, I love the fact that you use the sandcastle. I'm so happy you use the sandcastle. That crit was unfortunate, um, but well played by both. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how this championship goes. 